Hi there. In this short lecture, we're going to explore and answer the question, what is the value of educational research? And in reality, this short lecture is introducing you to the Applying Professional Knowledge or APK assignment. In simple terms, educational research is valuable because it's what good teachers do week in, week out in their classrooms. It's how they improve their practice and the process helps them become increasingly reflective. This photograph shows uh, the educationalist Lawrence Stenhouse, who was highly influential in curriculum development and in teacher development. And uh, he argued a couple of things about curriculum development and about teacher development. Um, he said that the learner should be central to any development of lessons or curriculum. And secondly, the role of the teacher, teacher as researcher was also essential to the role of planning and curriculum development. What is the value of educational research? Well, here Stenhouse answers our question. He says, the purpose of educational research is for teachers to test out ideas against their own experience. It's important that teachers are open-minded, prepared to experiment, to reflect on what worked and what didn't, and to refine this accordingly. As I said earlier, this is actually what uh, reflective teachers do. This, in a nutshell, is what your APK assignment is all about. This assignment works. We, we have been doing this at Sussex for way over 20 years, and it really does link to good teaching, to the teaching standards. It helps you become increasingly more reflective. So here's the brief. This assignment is at level seven, so it's, a, it's worth 30 M level credits. You need to write 6,000 words and it should be uploaded by 5 p.m. on Thursday, the 23rd of February, 2023. The brief, essentially you've got to design and critically evaluate both the planning based on research literature and the impact of a small unit of work or a series of lessons so that's between four to six hours worth of lessons within your curriculum area or phase so this is a written assignment and it should include appendices which are uploaded separately to the written assignment and these appendices should include things like lesson plans lesson evaluations lesson resources it's also highly recommended that you think about the impact that your lessons have had on the learning of the pupils. So it's a good idea if you can to capture pupil work in some form to show what progress they've made or any barriers to the progress they've made. It's important to remember that although you need your appendices, this assignment is actually an academic assignment marked at master's level. So we really are assessing you on how well you review the literature, how clear is your rationale for your four to six lessons, do you base it on the scholarship that you've read, how critically have you read this scholarship and how critically do you reflect on the impact of your lessons once you've taught them. So just remember that this really is about academic writing. However, although I gave you the hand in date and time, it is your responsibility to check all of the deadlines on Sussex Direct. And although that we meant we mention it in the handbook and in this lecture, you really do need to check your Sussex Direct pages to see when to hand it in. 
The purpose of this assignment is to develop strategies for effective short and medium term curriculum planning and to strengthen the process of evaluation and your ability to reflect upon your own practice. So this assignment actually offers us, well offers you, the explicit opportunity to work on a number of the areas highlighted, or the standards, sorry, highlight, highlighted in the core content framework. So, you will probably be focus on, focusing on pupils making progress, so you'll be looking at standard two and how pupils learn and promoting good progress. You clearly are gonna de demonstrate good subject and curriculum knowledge, which is three. You are going to be planning and teaching and evaluating well-structured lessons, which is four. Inevitably, you're probably going to be adapting your teaching to suit the needs of all, which is five. And to assess how well they've got what you wanted them to get, you're going to make accurate and productive use of assessment, which is six. So we've got it covered here when it comes to the core content framework. So how does the assignment work? Well it really follows a reflective cycle that all good teachers actually go through. Um, so you start off by identifying a focused area that you want to work on or improve in your classroom. So you are the researcher in your own classroom. So you might want to consider um, assessment for learning practices, for example. So what you would do is you would then go and read and evaluate what others, others have said about assessment for learning. You're probably going to read Black and William and some more up-to-date scholarship. Um, and by looking critically at lots of scholarship, you will be able to see what it is that you really, really want to hone in on. And this will help you create your rationale for what you're going to try out in your unit of work. So having done this, you will then plan, teach and deliver your four to six lessons. And within those lessons you'll be trying out the ideas that you read in the scholarship. Having taught them you'll critically reflect on how well it went, what worked, what agreed with the scholarship, what didn't work, what were the barriers to pupil progress and you'll link this back to the theory that you read. And to finish you will conclude by thinking about what might you do differently if you did this in the future? What recommendations can you make to improve your practice? What we're really looking for is that you can link theory to your own practice. So you need to consider what what you what have you actually read about uh, pedagogy or about curriculum or about your subject area or about cognitive science or about um, teaching approaches? Um, what scholarship has influenced you, and how has this scholarship actually influenced your own practice? And then when you when you teach your unit of work, you are considering how did the theory kind of pan out in your classroom? How was it exemplified? How did you develop it? How was, how was the theory challenged in your teaching? Basically, did the ideas you try out agree or disagree with what the scholarship seems to claim? The next thing we need to really consider is what will your APK assignment actually look like? How will it be structured? Well, in a nutshell, it will look like this. 
you will start with a title or a cover page which will give the name of your assignment and the word count and it will have a content page which will outline the different uh, areas in your assignment and really really importantly at the end you will have your reference list and you will use the Harvard referencing system. You will then have an introduction just kind of just outlining what your project is about and giving the context of the school that you work in and the class that you're working with. You will then spend about, about 2,500 words reviewing the literature, looking at the scholarship and explaining why you decided to do what you did in your unit of work. You will produce an, an overview grid, a unit overview grid, which will just outline your four to six lessons and give your marker an idea of what actually happened in the classroom. And here you can also link to the scholarship. And the next main part is having Having outlined in your literature review and your rationale why you did what you did, you can then go on and evaluate your practice. What was the impact in your classroom? How well did it go? Did, did what you tried out agree or disagree with what the scholarship said? And you should spend about 2,000 words on this section. And finally, you will finish with a short conclusion which makes recommendations. What are you going to focus on? Um, well, really, each subject is different and you should be talking to your curriculum tutor and your mentor about what you might focus on. But here I've listed a few titles from a couple of subjects from different APK assignments. But as I said, you really do need to speak to your own curriculum tutor for more guidance on what you might focus on in your particular subject. In this last slide of our first short lecture on introducing your APK assignment, let's go into a little bit more detail about what your assignment might look like. Your introduction uh, and context will come first and in roughly 500 words you will set the scene, outline the problem, the issue or the area that you're going to address in your teaching. You will explain the school context anonymously, you'll probably refer to the latest Ofsted report for the school which explains the type <coughs> and size of the school and you will also contextualise the class that you will be focusing on explaining prior attainment of different groups of children and differing needs of anonymized individuals. You will then move on to your rationale and literature review. Basically, why you did what you said you were going to do. And here, you will critically evaluate the literature that surrounds your chosen focus. You might explore policy and guidance you might refer to the national curriculum or different versions of the national curriculum and you might look at exam specifications. You could also look at practitioner scholarship, that is other teachers who have previously researched their own practice. You could look at general learning theory or more empirically based pedagogical scholarship. What's key is with all of this literature you need to read it critically. Do the scholars agree with each other? Do you agree with them? And this should help you kind of synthesise and come up with the focus of your lessons or your rationale for your lessons, i.e. what is it that you're trying to research or try out in the classroom? 
So that basically is here you need to explain the influence of the literature and how it influenced uh, your unit of work. So next, you will include an overview grid with which references and outlines the planning of your unit of work. And actually, this is this grid is all you really write about the planning of the lessons. The next main section is your evaluation of your practice. Uh, so here you will consider what went well, what was successful. Did the students make good progress? Did anything hinder their progress? And all of the time you should be linking back to the scholarship that you focused on. Did what happened in your lessons agree with what happened in the research literature you read? Did you face any unexpected challenges? Did you have different findings to the research literature? Uh, and this section is quite important. It's the, the critical reflection and it's 2000 words. So then you will end with a short conclusion, which will explain overall how your knowledge has grown. What were the limitations of your project and what might you do differently if you were to teach this unit again? Uh, it's really important to remember that you're that you're it's about reflecting on your practice. So the lessons that you teach don't necessarily have to go perfectly uh, in in a in a in the real world. They often don't. Things change. OK, but it's about how well you reflect. And. You will also have to provide a separate set of appendices and there's no word count here. But what what you want to do here is you want to show the person marking your assignment about how you planned and evaluated your lessons. So you might include lesson plans. You might include individual evaluations. You might include the resources you made to teach different aspects of your unit of work. You might include the assessment criteria that you came with and you could include examples of pupils work to exemplify how they got or didn't get the um, idea that you were trying out okay and that in a nutshell is what your APK assignment might look like